I'm sorry. First, let's hear from the candidates with their opening remarks. And they have two minutes each. Uh, we uh, drew for that honor, and uh, Ms. Phillips will go first. Hi, thank you all. Um, and good evening, Dr. Forum, gentlemen of the panel, ladies and gentlemen of the audience. Please call me Sally. Only if you have to be formal, call me Dr. Phillips. I'm honored to be here tonight. I similarly will be as honored to, for me to serve as your commissioner. I'm running for a seat on the commission because I want to give back to the city I have been living in for nearly 14 years. South Miami is a beautiful city and I love living here. Your presence here, the proof of your active interest, and the delight I have taken in recognizing so many of your faces are aspects of why I love South Miami. As your commissioner, I will be in a position which will allow me to help this city, one, stay fiscally sound, two, grow in a way that benefits all the taxpayers, three, keep its traffic moving in a safe manner, and four, increase the resident participation in its government. I bring to this endeavor experience, maturity, intelligence, integrity, fairness, and a sense of humor. I bring energy and a commitment of my time so that I may do it right. I want to focus on getting things done, moving forward, and finding mutually beneficial solutions. South Miami is at a crossroads, literally and figuratively. Literally, South Miami will always be a pass-through, so traffic will always be with us. Figuratively, South Miami may choose to go up gradually and remain human scale or to build monoliths rising above much lower neighbors. It may choose to stay within a balanced budget or to go into debt that will have to be dealt with later. It may choose to take reasonable gambles or it may become rigidly risk adverse. The commission is elected by all of the city's voters. You know there is no clock showing here. Uh, 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 the voters delegate to all the commissioners the responsibility of making careful, well-considered decisions. It will be my job to ensure that the interests of all taxpayers are taken into account and the decisions I am part of will be to the best for the entire city. Is it possible, do you think, to have a running clock? There is a running clock. It's just very small. So it's, 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 well, why can't we have one that's like this? Because I can't see it from here. That was her opening remarks. I believe she was. Uh, thank you, Dr. Phillips, Sally, uh, <laughs> for your opening remarks. Uh, now, Josh. May I, may I stand or do I have to? Okay. Thank you. My name is Josh Leach. I'm the Commissioner of Health and about 12 years old, my parents told me that I had to start giving back to the community, and uh, they took me to the Miami Youth Museum so I could begin my long career in public service. And I used to volunteer at the Miami Youth Museum every Saturday. Every Saturday from noon until 5 p.m., while all my friends were out there, uh, out there playing, I was volunteering at the Miami Youth Museum. In the beginning, I uh, this wasn't my first choice, but after a while, Because I was just 12, naturally I could go to my parents to drop me off and uh, pick me up. Again, that's sort of a long career in, uh, or pardon me, was not a career, but I've uh, always been very active in the community and it started when I was young, right here in South Miami in the original bakery center. When I decided to uh, buy a house two years ago, I was looking at a house in Coral Gables, right off of Cartagena Circle. And I was about to put a contract on that house and <coughs> Before you do that, why don't you come see my house here in South Miami? I took one look at the house, at the neighborhood, and I said, this is home. Every day that I've been here since, it has reinforced that decision. I feel we have the best community in all of Dade County here in South Miami, but I feel we also have the worst
worst government in Dade County. One of my biggest concerns is that we do not have representative government in Dade County. South Miami extends from 88th Street from Kendall Drive to 40th Street to Bird Road. Time. Time. Josh, uh, thank you for your opening statement. I'm sure you'll be able to continue with the question. In fact, the first question that I'll ask before I turn over to the panelists has to do with annexation. And again, we'll start with Sally, uh, and then we'll alternate uh, who goes first after that. Uh, what is your view on annexation? Should the city of South Miami annex some surrounding areas? Why or why not? And specifically, are there any areas that you believe should be part of the city or should not be annexed? There is so much information that needs to be collected before I can answer one way or another on any of this. Do the citizens of South Miami want people to be annexed to it? Do those that might be annexed want to be annexed? What will be the cost to the city to annex these new people? Will the cost of providing them services be offset by whatever uh, benefits their taxes bring to the city. Uh, I think right now, if all those questions were answered and it looked like it would be appropriate, if the people, if South Miami wanted to include more people, I think it would be appropriate to offer that annexation, that infilling, to the northern part of the, of the city, which has individual homes next to un unincorporated Day County. Thank you. Uh, Josh, and if you are going to stand, just I asked both of our candidates to try to speak into the microphone uh, for the recording purposes. So they can be better heard. Annexation simply makes good business sense. Annexation. You have to turn the mic on. Yeah, there. Me. Annexation simply makes good business sense. Again, if I may refer to our map of South Miami, and I'm going to hold it upside down from south to north, from Kendall Drive to Bird Road, I like, I like to refer to this area here, which is the northern part, as the South Miami Keys, because if you, anyone refers to this map, these areas are fragmented. We have individual homes within three blocks, and we're providing services to these homes. We recently explored annexation, and we explored annexation all the way down to Tropical Park. I have no desire to expand down to all the way down to Tropical Park because I don't want to lose control of my city. I want to preserve the small town character. But to square off the boundaries down to Bird Road makes good business sense. Thank you. I'm not going to ask a follow-up on that because I think it'll come out of our panelists, and our panelists have a lot of excellent questions. Uh, so I'll just start in the order of the program. Uh, Sean Cruz from South Miami Hometown, you have the first question. The city of South Miami is in the same position as many other cash-strapped municipalities in that the stressed economic environment both here and elsewhere have led to significant job losses. In addition, South Miami specifically is faced with other issues like rising pension, ob pension obligations, employee severance cost, and legal fees, most of which have been the result of poor decisions on numerous fronts. Historic designation to name one 62nd Avenue region and a parking garage development. Through all of this, there's not been one significant initiative to work with business and property owners in order to create growth, jobs, and additional tax revenue. Several large property owners have discussed plans to develop projects that would bring jobs and bring significant tax dollars to the city. Instead of embracing these opportunities, the city has done the complete opposite. Every month there seems to be uh, various resolutions proposed that will not only restrict smart growth, but chase away potential investors. In addition, the city has made no effort to reach out to the property owners to discuss ideas and formulate plans for smart growth. I'd like to hear from you, each of you, of how you would approach these challenges and how would you suggest the city embrace future opportunities to provide jobs and smart growth? One minute first to Josh. The city needs to be run like a business. After all, the city is a business. The only current commissioner with business experience and attempts to run the city like a business is Valerie Newman. What this city needs is somebody with a business background, I have a 
undergraduate degree in business, own a number of businesses, I own a business, I have an MBA. What we need to do is we need to explore smart growth and it starts with communication. There's absolutely no communication between our current commission and the business own, both the retail business owners and the commercial property owners in South Miami. Uh, may I ask, uh, with the remainder of your time there, you mentioned you owned a number of businesses. Can you tell us about that? In the past, I, um, I started a, uh, one business I own is an athletic apparel label called Happy Pace. It's a play on happy face and uh, go to your happy place. It's athletic apparel for endurance events. I own a number, another company called Metal Memories, and that it's a uh, metal display company. Um, okay. Time. Uh, Sally, do you want him to repeat all or some of the question? Could he repeat the last one where the question sat? Yes, please. Yeah, I, we, we would, I'd like to hear from each of you uh, of how you would approach the challenges that I mentioned and how you would suggest the city embrace future opportunities to provide jobs and promote smart growth? When I, when I, if I were sitting on the commission and I heard somebody make a proposal that they wanted to do such a thing, I certainly would like to hear from them. I would like to gather as much information as possible and to pull in the, the residents and anybody else who is interested in having a workshop or, or a charrette to, to develop the thing. Right now, I, ha I have been sitting on the um, planning and zoning board, and I don't know in the last months that I've been on it that any particularly interesting or large projects have been presented. At this point, I would like to see that such projects presented. I would like to know how indeed they are going to help jobs happen. I think that benefits should be offered to um, pr or preferences given to businesses which are going to create jobs and add training. Thank you. Uh, the next question will be from James Dundorf of the South Miami Neighbors Association. Hey Sally, hey Josh. Um, my, my question is kind of funny because the polar opposite to, uh, to Sean's here. Uh, as you know, South Miami Neighbors Association, formerly homeowners, has worked to keep our, our small town character by limiting development uh, to current zoning and current land use codes. Uh, under what cir the question is, under what circumstances would you approve upzoning or easing current restrictions on development? Am I supposed to answer that first? Yes, that's to you first. <laughs> um, under those circumstances where the proposed project might indeed provide good jobs, secure jobs to South Miamians, under where the proposed project would show that there is indeed income to be gained. I do not, well, I do not want to see buildings where, that are standing empty. I think that takes far away from the home, uh, buildings, offices, shops that are standing empty. I think uh, if there could be a good proposal for a secure, um, full-serviced um, grocery store, I would very heavily entertain that. But I do not want to see tall buildings next to very small, flat, low ones. Uh, thank you, Josh, same question. Okay. I'll seek a healthy balance between the, both the private sector and the public sector in South Miami, meaning the homeowners and the businesses, preserve our hometown character while keeping our taxes low. We don't have to explore upzoning, we can stick to the current hometown plan and there's there's plenty of development opportunity if we just stick to the hometown plan without having to change, it's okay, <laughs> without uh, having to change uh, height restrictions or add variances. Uh, both candidates have been very good actually in going under the time and so that will allow us to get some more questions in and I think it'll balance out in the end. You're answering as much or as little as you want on the particular question. We'll work with that um, in the interest of fairness each person will have a chance. Did you want to follow up on that at all, James? Or do you want to? Uh, uh, no, no, I thought those were great answers. Concise, clear, thank okay. you. Okay, uh, great. Thank you. We'll hear a new question then from Hans. Uh, Hans Husby from the Red Sunset Merchant Association. There is a widespread
red feeling. But my microphone's not on. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Tech Guy. <laughs> There's a widespread feeling among the merchants in downtown South Miami that the city government really doesn't do much, if anything, to help the merchants. If you look at Red Road on the uh, east side of Red Road, just, just south of Sunset, you'll see that the county put in a nice beautification project there. Yet if you look just south of 73rd on the east side, the city side of Red Road, it's still sort of this barren area. and. Um, also on Sunset Drive, we've seen palm trees die and not be replaced. And my question is, how do you see the role of the city government in, quote, helping the merchants? That question goes to Josh first. Thank you. We, we need to improve infrastructure. Uh, another thing we need to do is streamline the business occupational license process. That can be done online. We also should create a welcome packet to court businesses similar to other cities. That's something that could be championed by Red Sunset Merchants, Chamber South, and our, uh, our current local government. It all starts with, uh, with communication. We're very fortunate in South Miami in that our businesses pay 53% of our taxes. That means if it wasn't for the businesses, our taxes would increase by 100%. We need to support our businesses in South Miami. And when I say businesses, I'm referring to re tell businesses, not development, not commercial buildings. There are a number of businesses in South Miami that are struggling and the businesses have no voice and there's a communication void between the current commission and Red Sunset Merchants and Chamber South. So would you just um, summarize the question again briefly? In brief. How do you see the role of city government in, quote, helping, end quote, the merchants? Oh, I think the city government needs to listen very carefully to merchants' requests and to, that will, and to evaluate whether or not they're reasonable to do and to evaluate whether or not indeed they will help. I think that the city has worked very hard to provide parking downtown. Still, I hear from people that I've been talking to that the parking makes it very difficult for them to stop and shop at several different places or to stay and have a meal. And so I think that, that we can work toward, you know, and I said to that person, why don't you use the garage? And she, like, she didn't really know the garage existed. So I, I think that it, it is important for us to listen to what is requested and to try to take that into account and if it's in within our budget to pay for improvements that are appropriate. Thank you. Uh, the next question will be from Pastor James of the Concerned Clergy of South Miami. 